Hello, everybody. This is Terry with the Pre Mom team here with Monica, NFP health professional. Thank you for joining us, Monica. Thank you for inviting me to this wonderful talk that we're going to have. Thank you. Yes, we're talking about CM tracking, cervical mucus tracking. I'm super excited because we haven't touched very much on this topic. So, this will be a great first video on this. We're actually going to do two parts, right? We're gonna do part one that gives an overview and gets into it a little bit and then follow up with a nice part two. Yes, I think it, it would be important to divide it into and just to start with the basic, how it's produced and all those kind of things and later into real in detail what a woman needs to understand and develop the awareness of the cervical mucus. Okay, and make sure you check out both parts because Monica has a lot of nice visuals and really goes into a good explanation of how to track and how to identify cervical mucus. So let's jump in. Okay, sure. Let's see here. Can you just start talking about why cervical mucus even exists? What's going on with the biology of the body? Okay, so uh, since um, around 1952, the only a natural method um, to postpone or achieve pregnancy was the rhythm method, which is just counting the days. And uh, it, it really works very well for women that have regular cycles, like 28, 30. But women at, at the end, in any of the different um, phases that we have in our reproductive life, it could be a stress, breastfeeding, um, uh, perimenopause, the, the cycles are not as regular as it is. So women needed to find another way to really track what it makes them feral and not feral. And that's what we started. Dr. Billings in 1952, they are from Australia, John and Evelyn Billings, they started to track and understand really what was the sensations and the feelings that women have and what they are seeing. Actually, everything was based first uh, using veterinary doctors because they really know when a cow or, or what we call a heifer before it has the first baby, the first calf, they really have this type of thing. They have this mucus. So that was the first sign that there was something that we produce that make us fertile. And after that, at that time in 1960, when is the doctors starting to, to, to develop really the science behind reproductive fertility? And they develop the natural methods to postpone or achieve pregnancy naturally, just tracing your cervical mucus. Okay. That, that is the beginning. And now we have different um, methods and different ways to track it. And, but at the end is the same. It's just to see when we are feral and when we're not in, uh, when are, we are in feral, just tracking our cervical mucus. Okay, great. Let's get into that a little bit. What's going on with your menstrual cycle? Where does cervical mucus come from and where does it come into play? Sure. I would like to share with you my screen and I start with that. Great. So um, first I'm going to... Um, explain how this first uh, graphic show us. So these are our bones in the pelvics. This is our vulva, or and here is our urethra as well. Here's our vagina, that is the receptacle for the intercourse. And here is the cervix. So the uterus has two parts. The endometrium where the lining occurs, the blood, and here is the cervix, that is kind of the neck. That cervix has, in the entrance here, has a very important structure that are call, called the cervical crypts. This cervix, the anterior part of the uterus, has these cervical crypts which allow the sperm, the spermatozoids from the uh, men to live in this ramification. And as well, this ramification produce mucus. And Depending on which is the uh, phase of your uh, menstrual cycle, if you're in the pre-ovulatory before the LH peak or after the LH peak has occurred, your post-ovulatory phase, you produce different type of mucus. And that mucus is related if the sperm can survive in your internal organs and actually reach into your 
fallopian tube and reach the egg here where it's released. So when you have the G mucus, we call G mucus, it's an infertile mucus. As you see, the sperm is trapped. It cannot go there. When you have this fertile mucus, we call E mucus because it's come from estrogen. Is one of the second is the is the first hormone produced by your ovary, and is the second hormone that it has to be released during your your menstrual cycle. When you have this e mucus that is produced here at your cribs in your cervix, look how the sperm can swim and reach the egg at the level of your fallopian tube. So that is why it's so important the cervical mucus. Now, just to give you where are you located. So using this chart, um, as you can see, here is ovulation. When the egg is released, when the egg is released, it needs a lot of um, steps in order that that happen. So as soon as your menstruation has come, some of your immature egg has to be um, stimulated and they're stimulated by the brain and they produce a hormone that is called estrogen. And as you see, estrogen has to rise gradually. Every day, there's a little more of estrogen released for your immature eggs that are called follicles and they start to moderate. When do you reach the maximum of this production of estrogen is when the LH start to surge. And when the peak LH that is the peak of fertility, because in 12 to 36 hours, your egg is going to be released, yes? So how we can know that we are producing estrogen? One is because the LH is activated, but at the same time, because there is a changing developing pattern that it could be expressed in a sensation or in something that you see. And that is the focus of detecting cervical mucus, is how you feel and how and what you can see. After the LH peak is rich, that you can use it with your premom strips, the egg, it has to be this follicle, the egg is released and the remaining of the follicle is form in the corpus luteum, which produce progesterone. And this progesterone is the one that rises the temperature and you can detect it by the body basal temperature. And as soon as it is released, the egg, you produce the amount of progesterone and later you will have a little more of estrogen. That's the reason that after ovulation, the three following day, there's a dramatic change, but later you again can be a little wet, but not as much as at the beginning. And that's what we need to concentrate. What are the changes that a woman can feel and can see during this rise, rapid rise of estrogen in order to trigger the LH, which will trigger the release of the egg? Now- This is really nice. So the, the cervical mucus, I think I remember reading it, it happens around the time of ovulation and it can be a little bit before, right? So yes, sometimes or I'm sure you're into that more later. Um, yes, that, exactly. I love that explanation that you had of um of how you can be have the wetter um, yes. sensation after because I know that question comes up quite a bit. So thank you for addressing yes. that. Yes. So the cervical mucus and the sensation is a changing developing pattern that ends in a slippery in this wetness, in this cervical uh, fluid that is, it is, is an indirect effect of a hormone. Really the cervical mucus is something that you see, but is the effect of a hormone that you're producing from your ovary and it's called estrogen. So estrogen gives you this type E um, mucus and you will see it just five, six days before the LH peak. Okay, and as soon as the LH peak that we call the peak of fertility because 24 to 36 hours a woman is going to ovulate, immediately after ovulation we will see the type G mucus, which is dry. Remember, this type E mucus, as you can see here, that is producing different, you know, different kind of uh, crypts in your cervical, um, in your cervix. 
is a type of mucus that has channels. So a sperm can travel here. So a man can produce 100 to 300 million of a sperm. We need one to fertilize one of our eggs. So we need to clean that sperm. And that is the beauty of this mucus because the beauty of this E type E mucus has channels and has had some firm kind of pattern. So the sperm that are defective that has two, two heads or not moving really well, they cannot swim through this mucus and reach the egg that is released. The E-type mucus that is produced because of the progesterone, the hormones released after ovulation, it cannot penetrate. So it is like if you have been pregnant because the egg was released, the sperm was able to swim and to reach the egg. And after you produce the, the mucus that is G, it would produce a barrier. So that's the reason that is protected. And that's one of the reasons that this is, um, that we produce type G mucus. And type e e mucus. For, type is estrogen. For estrogen. And then type it's G is for progesterone. Okay. And type, type G means you're dry or you see a discharge that every day is the same. So fertility means changing. If you're fertile, you're changing. Every day you feel different and you're reaching to the peak of LH. But if you're every day the same, it looks like you are kind of an infertile, okay? Okay. Okay, now how, to, how you observe the cervical mucus. So a woman has to develop this fertility awareness. Fertility, means presence of cervical mucus and detecting some hormones in urine, absolutely. But a woman needs to think about how the mucus feels all through the day. They need to write and to select in their apps what they see and what they feel. So one thing that you don't see anything is dry and you don't feel anything is dry. Dry is typically what you will have uh, as you go through the bathroom is another way to really start to develop this awareness is going to the bathroom and before bedtime. So when you go to the bathroom, you wipe out from front to back, you really need to know what it is in the toilet. If there's something that is there like gloomy, cloudy, or it's just water, yes? Or if it's like a film. So those are the things that we start to um, develop this awareness. We have to keep in mind what we're looking for. That's the reason that we're going to have some exercise like with a row a white type mucus and um, tooth space. That is like this, this chart is not a stretchy. Always look if there's any kind of a stretchy thing there and how stretchy it is. Some women don't feel that they have, they, they don't see the mucus, but they feel the mucus. They feel a change from dry to moist to wet. And that is as valuable as seeing it. Okay. Because some of these natural family plumbing methods, we encourage women that their feelings are as important as seeing it but we can help them with natural remedies to have this awareness of what they have to see. And we will talk this in the second session about how we can increase to see this mucus. Okay. Another thing, uh, when, I, when I teach um, you know, couples, we have these natural family planning instructors that you have a very awareness in your nose if mucus is dripping, isn't it? Or if something is bothering you. So it's mm -hmm. kind of the same because it's the same kind of, of mucus. Is, is this a slippery, a stretchy? You know, we just move. When we were little, we like to play with them. So it's very similar, <laughs> which what it is. So it's the same when men say, oh, we have, what, what, what we have to look, no, they cannot see what is cervical mucus. But if you talk to them about what is the sensation in an nose, they will understand. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you have to share the most fertile mucus. Most fertile means stretchy, slippery, 
lubricant, like a lubricant, lubricative, all those kind of things natural coming from you. That's what you need to look for. So sensation and seeing is as important as, and if you have both, much better. But both of them are equally important. So what happened during just using the Primont um, uh, charts that they have in their web? I'm just going to explain it that we have always, your app is going to determine where it will be your fertile window, when it will be your LH peak, and where will be your day of ovulation with these exactly same colors that I'm offering here. So the fertile mucus or phase or fertile, uh, fertile window means that these days there's a rise in estrogen. This is LH, but there will be a rise of, in, in estrogen. And that estrogen will change your cervical mucus and your sensations. So mucus appears at the level of the vulva. The vulva is you know, our clitoris, our urethra, our major labia and our minor labia is very sensitive. So women without seeing can feel it what is going there. So that is what we need to develop. So, and we will first usually feel that is from moistness, moistness to stickiness. And it will be the first sensation that estrogens are getting high and we're going to heat our fertile window. That is usually, but it could vary, even could be 11 days, varies between five to six days. As soon as the estrogen is producing more and more because each day has to rise a little more estrogen, so there will be a developing pattern in the mucus that ends in a slippery. Mucus will be thick, white, yellow, cloudy at the beginning, scan, and estrogen rises mucus because more profuse, and you feel a sensation of a sleepiness. And mucus will end with has an stretchy more than an inch and egg white appearance. So I want to start with the mucus that is infertile or very low fertility, as we call as well. Is this thick, white, yellow, cloudy scan that you can see if you have some of your toothpaste, we will take it in our fingers and um, <laughs> Terry can show us. Let's yeah. see here. You might have to switch off for a second. Sure. Uh, can you end sharing the screen? Because I don't think I can do it from here. Let me see. Sure, I will just stop sharing. Okay. Got my toothpaste ready. Yes. If, if it is toothpaste, <laughs> we wanted yes. to do that disclaimer. To just take a little bit in between your fingers. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. I have the toilet paper, but then you can also just see. Yes. Very it's, a very, okay. it's not as stretchy. It's not as stretchy. It just keep their form, their shape. That is what it is kind of a discharge. Yes. Yeah. So just keep their face, their shape. So that is kind of the discharge that we call. And that will kind of um, what we call the beginning, the low fertility scan, keeps their shape, it's not as stretchy. Some women don't have it. And every day will have that same discharge. Some women that they are considered that they are dry, it's like you can change your underwear every day and there's no problem. Those are the women that are dry. They really don't have any discharge. They don't see and they don't feel anything. That's when is the low fertility or what we call infertile days at the beginning after menstruation. Yes. Can you talk about sticky versus creamy? Yes. The creamy so, is more wet. But... Yes, yes. A, a creamy is a little more wet because it has more liquid. And um, the cervical mucus has a, a much, much component of um, a liquid. The osmolarity is higher, like similar to the semen. It has to be sticky because we need that the sperm has to be sticky to this mucus so it can travel. So it's natural that it could be this, um, a, this form that has, is more liquid, yes. Okay. And at the end, as soon as it will change it, um, it will what we call the raw, um, um, raw white egg type of mucus that we can see with the egg that you just brought for us. So can you show us how is 
the typical mucus that it will kick or trigger the LH to surge. Okay, you told me, I have the egg here. You told me yes, that there's just, like two different parts. Yes. Just the outside part? Yes. This one's watery. You see. It's the watery that Primon talks. That is close, some women or some uh, health professionals call it cervical fluid because it's like fluid, it's watery. Some women sometimes, especially teenagers, they think that they have an infection or something is going on. What is this? And um, and when they dry it in clothes, it's really like, um, it, it is like something that it was with protein. Yeah, this is different. You see this one? Yes. That is kind of the sticky, gloomy kind of cloud. Did you, I saw it, the stretchy, like more, yes, perfect. Those are some of the pictures. So. It is important as well to have a, a piece of paper towel and just put some blood, some some water, and you will see how when you are totally dry, that's the way that the toilet will be. So these are kind of some of the real examples that we can use just using other uh, patterns in nature that resembles <laughs> what we produce. So if you you want me to continue or or uh, there's anything that at this point is not clear. Yeah, can you just go over one more time? Like, cause I know, um, so the egg white is ideal, the stretchy one that I was mm -hmm. just showing. And you said that the important thing is noticing the, the sensational difference. And we'll talk about that later, dry versus wet. I think sometimes there's a confusion because some women get the sticky and some don't, and some get the creamy and some don't yes. and the wet. Yes. And, can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yes, our menstrual cycle and our characteristics are unique like our fingerprint. That's the reason that a women, women have to chart because chart represent a pattern. Each woman has a different pattern of fertility. Even 89, 90% of women will have regular cycles of 29, 30 days with this beautiful textbook developed of cervical mucus. But it doesn't mean that the other, they are in the tail 10, 20%. They are not feral, they cannot get pregnant. It's just different. So all of us, as we, really start tracking our cervical mucus daily, we will develop this awareness and it's our partner. These are just examples, but each woman has a pattern and that's what they have to develop. There's awareness and this encouragement that they just need to understand and feel the sensation and what is exactly that is theirs. But no textbooks in life really matters. You just what you want is to get pregnant. It's an age. You just need one egg and one sperm. That's it. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. let's continue. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's continue. So we were here in this develop this time. So since your premon app will kind of tell you when you will be your probably your LH because it's going to tell you here your day of ovulation and you're starting testing your LH, you know, very soon, uh, cycle day six or nine. And as soon as you get closer, you're going to see all the changes in the mucus. Doesn't go down. Mm. Um, okay. So this is the most important, as you say, when we saw the this row white, type mucus, that's what we call the peak mucus definition. There's two, two different things that we have to clear. One is the peak mucus. So it means the last day of wetness, a slippery, rubricative day, that it doesn't match or could match with the LH peak. Not necessary, not 100% of the times. Why? Before we have this a great opportunity to test the LH in urine. Women, like when I began 20 years ago, the only way to know when was the best time to conceive, it was just by cervical mucus. So it's something that is still updated, but we have something to help us. If you have an LH peak, it means that you have produced estrogen, 
because without estrogen, there's no LH peak if you are in a regular cycle. There's some irregularities that it could have LH sporadically, but we're not talking this today. We're just talking when you have high estrogens, it will um, it trigger your LH, your search of LH. So this peak mucus is when you have these that um, Terry show us as well with an egg, uh, using the um, egg white, this is what you will see. It could be even see a little cloudy quite, uh, white here and totally transparent. And you see this gloomy kind of a sticky weight, exactly as we saw it in the egg. Now, using this from the Primum website, you see that here is the LH. So I want to differentiate this LH peak. It could be close, very close. It could be even a couple of days before you have the LH, but it always kind of match. But if you have the wetness, the watery, and you have an LH peak, it's because you have produced enough estrogen to trigger the LH. And so there's two things to assure it that really you have mucus. Now, after the ovulation is going to come what we call the post-ovulatory dry phase. Not all women are that all the time dry, but cervical mucus can pinpoint the peak mucus fertility because as after this lubricative, slippery sensation, when the following day you're totally dry, there's a dramatic change. You're dry or you have this sticky kind of gloomy mucus. So you know that you switch the hormones. Estrogen produces mucus and progesterone dries. Okay. And that is the, the dramatic change. So it is important to know that in the post-ovulatory dry phase, the sleep sensation is lost, that amount, and abrupt change to a stickiness cloudy and the dryness. Okay. Again, this is totally different and dryness. Okay. It is important to see what are the advantages and disadvantages to sharp cervical mucus. The advantage is the accurate in predicting ovulation. As I'm telling you, it could be the same day or previous days when you have, you're going to have your LH search with an LH peak detected by the Primon app. And um, you, uh, the advantage of the cervical mucus is and self-observation, no, no device necessary provides a marker for the beginning and the end of fertile window. Why? Because it means that the sperm will survive up to five days in your system. Because that mucus, it gives you a transport media for, your, for the sperm. It, it will give nutrition to the sperm. In the cribs, they are open. The one that I show you in the cervix. So the sperm stay there until the egg is released. They can wait five days there until the egg is released. So that is what we call the, the fertile window is five days yeah, before that what we predict as the day of ovulation, okay? What are the disadvantages? Somewhat is subjective and women struggle with that. What if I don't see it? I don't feel it. It takes time because it's a day-to-day -day practice. Other fluids can be present. We're going to see in the second session about this, like arousal fluid and semen. And sometimes we can have vaginal or cervical inf uh, infections that confound our reading, so it's hard. So it is important to always to know that we are um, healthy. Okay, so thank you very much, Monica, for this part one, giving everyone an introduction to cervical mucus and how to track to look for how we're all different and our cycles are different. And we'll have even further information about cervical mucus CM tracking in part two. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me.